In example basics 6 MIDI, we are looking at how to use the Velen library to send MIDI messages to a audio application. In this example, we are using GarageBand. So let's have a look. I'll start a new sketch here. And um, the first thing I'm going to do again is import the library and then write the necessary boilerplate code and so the first thing that we would need to do now is to um, get information about our um, computer setup so we need to find out if there's a MIDI device available on the machine and um, then we need to look at the name and um, specify that name when we start our tone engine. So the, the library comes with a few helpful functions. There are of course other ways to um, find out what MIDI devices are available in the system, whether it's external devices connected to the system via, for example, USB, or um, whether it's internal MIDI devices. Um, um, that's uh, both both of them will show up if you use this method here so we have this uh, we have different ways of dumping information about the audio systems on the in the um, uh, installed in the system so here we now are interested in the um, output devices so MIDI output devices um, devices to which we can output MIDI events so if we run this then um, this method then we will get a um, a dump of all the um, available devices in the system. I just know from experience that this one and this one, these two devices that show up here are not really relevant to me. They are not the ones I'm looking for. So first I need to configure um, my MIDI setup, my internal virtual MIDI device. Uh, on macOS, this can be achieved by opening and the audio MIDI setup application, which is located in uh, applications um, utilities folder. So once we run this application, we are presented with the audio system of our system, with the audio systems in our operating system. And um, if this window doesn't show up, normally it opens like this. So, um, so um, you might need to first might, might need to show the MIDI Studio window, which is this one here. We have it here already. And then you need to um, select the IAC, this is the Inter-Application Communication Driver, and um, have a look at this window. So here, in, under ports, there are no ports available. So what I can do is to create a port. Um, it is by default named Bus1, and that is actually fine. I'll just leave the name. I can also edit the name for reasons, but um, which I don't know yet <laughs> as of now, but so I leave it at, at, the, at its default name, bus one. Um, then also I need to make sure that the, um, that the device is online. Okay, so I need to tick this box as well. And once I apply this um, and run this sketch again, there's a, another device that shows up here. And this is called bus one. So, um, we can use that name now and start the tone engine with this method. And now we tell it that we want a MIDI output, not the internal synthesizer that we are using in the um, examples prior to this one, but now we want a MIDI output. So we need to write MIDI like this, that tells tone that it's now not sending the um, the events to its internal synthesizer but to uh, some MIDI output device and then we give need to also give the name of the MIDI output device which in our case is bus1 so when we run the sketch now we will hopefully well see the output again and then nothing which is actually a good sign because um, it, you will only see um, something in case um, you misspell, for example, the name of the device. So um, let's see if this one crashes because it says couldn't find MIDI device, blah, 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 bus 
null pointer exception. So we misspelled it. So it needs to be exactly like it's specified in the output here from the dump media output device. Okay, and then we do a little bit of boilerplate again. Now let me just copy this line. I'm, I don't feel like writing it now. Um, so, so now we, um, we draw an ellipse of different size depending on whether a note is playing or not. And then we also need our um, need some some event we use the mouse now to turn on a note and um, we use note on and now we need to again like define the pitch let's say 45 and the velocity let's say 100 and um, let's see what happens now so we run this doesn't complain so I can assume that the, the MIDI device was found and when I now press the note okay it's not turned off so uh, it will stay on but I also don't hear anything and that is because we are sending our note to bus one MIDI device but there's no one listening to that so <clears throat> now we bring in our actual audio application and I use in this uh, example I use GarageBand but you could also use of course other applications like for example Ableton Live or Logic Pro or many others. So um, I just started like an empty, like a, like a new pro project, song, something, um, and I created a single track, a MIDI track, um, and by default that um, it's already configured in a way that it could work nicely already. So I start the sketch again. here I use garage band and I have very little screen estate here so now when I press the uh, the mouse it will send a note on event and I can see it something's happening and I can hear something it's triggering this classic electric piano instrument but it keeps ringing forever because we we don't turn it off again so I'll fix that so whenever the mouse is released, <clears throat> we turn the note off. And so when I'm when I'm done playing, I um I send this note off and, and then the, the note is turned off again in GarageBand as well. So this is actually uh, yeah, most of the important things that, that you need to know. Um, maybe one, um, one, one addition here. If I now I uh, play some random notes and you can see that I'm um, I'm able to um, to use whatever uh, instrument I select in um, GarageBand and this is again like this is really opening up the world or a world of uh, yeah, a lot of possibilities because um, Applications like GarageBand um, or, or other audio applications that come with a with a with a like huge set of instruments basically. So when I switch an instrument, and GarageBand is really quite simple, um, I switch to a different instrument, and now I uh, have like a totally different sound played when I when I trigger this note on. And this can be used to um, to create quite a lot of interesting, um, yeah, soundscapes basically. And one thing to note maybe uh, is that uh, as as we uh, discussed in a in a previous example, um, 
an example basics five instruments um, tone is written to have 16 default instruments in the MIDI context you we can also use these instruments um, as, as specified here tone instrument and then an ID of an instrument um, in, in the MIDI context that would actually select a different MIDI channel and a MIDI channel um, could be something like a different, really like a different instrument. For example, one on channel zero you have a guitar, on channel one you have strings, and on channel two you have a, a drum set or something like this. So, um, so this, the tone instrument concept is mapped onto MIDI channels. Um, I cannot, I cannot demonstrate this right now because GarageBand can only listen to a single channel. So that's a limitation of GarageBand. But other um, uh, more expensive applications um, allow you to control different tracks, different instruments um, with um, via MIDI, and um, you can make use of that in tone by using the tone instrument you know, to select different channels. Well, that's it for now for the MIDI example, and see you for the next one. <laughs>